We've got a pretty cold day here, but it's intermittently quite sunny and it seems like a nice day to look at some solar related experiments. Uh, I think I've got a playlist on our channel now where we're starting to document more and more some of these little baby steps into the idea of creating simple DIY uh, solar mounting systems, moving more and more of our equipment and farming gear off grid and the like. But recently we worked on an interesting project in our neighbor's property that I'd like to share with you folks. You can see there's five panels out there that is past our property line that's into our neighbor Ian's property. He was really interested and open to the idea of installing some panels. These are going to be routed back into our basement. For folks that are interested, these are there's, there's five panels here. These are 340 watt panels. In fact, I'll go underneath and look. I got these used from an electrician up in Geneva, New York. But the idea is that these five 340 watt panels will be connected in series. You can see this is distinctly a work in progress. They've not been wired together but all five of them will be wired in series. There'll be a 20 amp fuse on the positive line coming out of that, and they will then be connected to this 10 AWG wire, which can carry quite a bit more than 10 amps worth of energy. I got tons of this stuff for free from an electrician um, a few hundred feet at a time in these spools. He was willing to, and open to the idea of trading for plants at some point in the future. And we're just simply running this above ground. Since we're a nursery, we dig a huge amount. It felt less risky to run this as an aerial run, but this will route back and into the house and ultimately go to a battery and a controller that will allow us to recharge a used electric car that will eventually become our farm truck. I, may, I think I'm pretty much going to be getting a used Chevy Bolt and a trailer that will be able to replace our truck at some point and these panels will charge that. The idea for setting these up in our neighbor's landscape was a couple things. Number one was uh, a roof mount system on our home just didn't make sense. So you can see, you can barely see the house right now and it's, it's winter. Uh, in the summer months there's no real direct sunlight on the home and we love that. It gives us air conditioning from a giant uh, old apple that's there. So not a lot of solar gain on the roof and this area is open and not really in the way. We just had to lift a few black currents that were underneath here, um, but the, the total amount of vegetative irritation or problem is nil. On the north side of it, there's a couple of red buds and black currants. We might plant Shisandra to grow up the fence and create a visual barrier, and we might lay in some perforated pipe for drainage and flatten this out under here and use this as a place to store uh, communal tools and pots and things like that. That's to be determined. But let me talk about how we actually put this thing together. I'm really pleased with the structural integrity of this basic design. And Ian took a real lead in coming up with the uh, engineering concept on how to make these things work. But we have two basic ingredients. We have these. They're DOT uh, fence posts. I got these from a game farm down the road. They were getting rid of a, a pheasant rearing farm operation, kind of a bleak scene. But they, I talked to the people that were getting rid of the farm and the guy was like, yeah, we don't care. We already have the funding for what's next. So you can take as many of those as you want for free. They're 10 foot poles that are absolutely massively uh, dense and strong. The lower end we cut in half. So they were five foot poles pounded two feet in the ground. And the north side, where the full 10 foot poles pounded about three feet in the ground. It's quite a doing. Uh, we used a heavy duty post pounder to do that, but those should be good for quite a long time. And they create, at least conceptually, they create a grounding pathway that if there ever was a lightning strike, it's unlikely on these panels, but if there was that the metal contact of the panels to the metal top rail going down through the metal, that there are eight points where uh, they may want to ground before they'd want to send down the line. I'm really open in the comments. Tell me if you think I'm way off on that. It's a little hard to see, but I'm going to try to show it. I also took a bunch of video shots as we were making this, but the way the uprights connect to the underpinning that holds the panels. So these are military uh, fence posts I got for $5 a piece. It's the only metal structure that costs anything. So the, the metal infrastructure was $30 for this project and then it's nuts and bolts as another 10 or 15. So let's say 50 bucks in total. And what Ian came up with is metal cutting tool. I'm gonna to put it on the screen what it actually is to make a little cut in this in a recess. And we pounded it over with a hammer and then used a metal drill bit 
to make a recess to be able to connect these. So he had threaded rod and a bunch of uh, nuts and we just used those. We made our own custom bolts and then he had a really brilliant idea to go through each one of these nuts and bolts and basically peen them or just whale on them with um, hardened steel to make a locked scenario. So in order for the nut to start walking back off the bolt, it has to overcome where the threads have been completely annihilated. So it's an interesting kind of brute force style way of locking them. We'll reassess. I'm going to come back through over the next month or two and see if they've loosened at all and tighten them up as needed. We did the same thing in here, wherever uh, two pieces overlapped, we went through and threaded rod and nut and you can see just kind of like wailed on the threading so that it doesn't want to walk backward. The panels themselves, the way they mount to the railing, it's kind of a fun treatment, is with quarter inch bolts. Uh, we used penny washers, which we custom made ourselves. You can see the bolt head in the back there. Sorry, this is a little bit hard to show. Um, there's a bolt with a penny washer that was drilled through. And then on the back end here, we've got the nut and we use Loctite to cinch that down. The washer idea was to distribute the force of the nut a little bit wider, make it harder to walk and move. And making them yourself for a penny a piece is a much pretty inexpensive way and it also allows for a little bit more electrical conductivity for a grounding path. Many, many points of possibility with that. Really interested to hear feedback from folks about this system. I feel like for the price, so sub $50 for a metal understructure that should be able to hold five panels for absolutely the life of the panels. Seems like it's Stanley approved. Feels like a good deal, feels sturdy and simple for an off-grid application. We're not doing grid tie, we're not looking for approval from zoning, uh, so this should be a reasonable independent system. The aerial run of the 10 AWG wire back to the home should be more than enough to carry the energy that this produces. And on sunny days, so even though it's cold out right now, if I were to clear that snow off and we had things set up, uh, this should be feeding at least 1500 watts, 1600 watts, which would be enough to charge an electric vehicle. And we're just gonna set a timer on the car to start requesting energy at around 10 in the morning and stop at around four or five in the evening. Uh, every hour of energy going in would give us five or six miles of driving. And so that's more than enough for our small commutes that we do. So use solar panels with uh, DOT fence posts and military uh, fence posts and then homemade <laughs> nuts and bolts for recharging a used electric vehicle that'll eventually be our farm truck once we put a trailer in a hitch. Be interested to hear from folks on this. Uh, talking in greater technical detail about these solar projects feels like a bit of a departure from what this channel is normally about but i feel like i've gotten hints and whispers that people are interested in it we can go deeper uh, i've got all sorts of little off-grid elements that we're starting to understand i'm just figuring this out as i go along i've got some folks in our life i talked before about um, a nissan leaf battery conversion that my friend joe made uh, I, i'll link to that video here but i've got some lovely folks in our life that can help us learn these things. Our friend Carl helped us make an electric wheelbarrow and I'll link to that video series here. Maybe there's interest in um, having those folks share more notes about what they're up to. So I don't want the channel to get completely moved away from plants. It definitely won't do that. But this is something that I'm actively involved in while the ground is frozen but the sun is shining. My thoughts of energy independence using ethically sourced used materials feels compelling. Should I go deeper with that? And what ways would you like to see that content evolve? For now, it's time to throw a stick for the boys. Go back to the no-tech scene. They've been very patiently waiting for me to be done. Done with this silly video and back to the important stuff, playing with them. So let me do that. <laughs> Hi. Good boy. What's it? Good boys.
What was that, about two and a half inches wide? Yeah, pretty much exactly. Yeah, like literally the all of it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What I would do this with, but... <laughs> <laughs> 